want you all to listen up because there's an alarming new medical issue. It's making news and it affects all of us. There have been new reports that oral sex can cause throat cancer. You know, the New England Journal of Medicine says that men and women with more than six oral sex partners had nine times the risk of, de of developing cancer of the tonsils or the base of the tongue higher than smoking and drinking alcohol together. Scary. You know, you know my head and neck experience as a head and neck cancer surgeon, I mean, we've known that, H that papillomas can form on the vocal cords and the vo voice box, which can lead to cancer. But now we're, we've found that it actually can lead to other cancers inside the mouth. For example, base of tongue, tonsils. Mm -hmm. And we've always known that STDs can be transferred, you know, with, with oral sex. But teens, a lot of teens use oral sex for safe sex. They don't see, or they don't right. see it as sex at all. And, and a lot of... Where do they get that? Well, <laughs> well, a lot of adults will use that to cheat. Um, they'll say that oral sex is not sex. But we, we as physicians know that it's just as risky. So, you know, the interesting thing, this is the HPV virus we're talking about. The same thing when we always talk about cervical cancer Absolutely. in women. And we'll talk about that more later. But, mm -hmm. boy, what an alarming thing. You know, I actually have taken care of some people in the emergency department who've contracted HPV virus that visually shows up, I don't want to say like warts, but didn't really think, you know, boy, this could also be cancerous. One of the take homes here is that if you have, you know, a sore in your mouth that doesn't go away, you have to have it checked out. Actually, the rule is two weeks. If you have something in your mouth that is not gone in two weeks, you need to get it looked at okay. and most likely biopsy. So two weeks right. is the rule of thumb. Right. And sexual activity, um, we know your, your risk is definitely increased if you have more than six partners. I want you all at home to watch this because Teresa is the new face of oral cancer. Here's her story. People think the typical face of oral cancer is a 70-year-old man who has smoked cigarettes and drank whiskey all his life. Cut to me. I'm the new face. I am a mother, I am a waitress, just your average person. In 2004, when I was 37 years old, I had a bad case of tonsillitis. I was treated with antibiotics. A year later, I had a sore throat and one of my tonsils was swollen up. They told me it was probably nothing. In May of 2006, my doctor ordered a CAT scan. It wasn't until the tonsil nearly doubled in size my doctor said this has to come out. I went for a tonsillectomy March 1st, 2007. I woke up from my surgery and I could hear my doctor telling me that my left tonsil had a tumor in it because of my cancer was the HPV virus. They've determined that there may be a link between oral sex and this type of cancer. They came to the conclusion that I would need my entire neck radiated and I would also need chemotherapy and a feeding tube. It's a devastating treatment. The flexibility of swallow, taste, chew food. My radiation treatment was every day for seven weeks, five days a week. I started to get a little burnt around my neck. I lost over half of my hair if I had been diagnosed earlier. I could have been spared some of the treatment that I had to go through. I was married for 11 years. I'm not promiscuous. I never thought that the practice of oral sex could lead to something like this. Who would think that? HPV is very common. People need to know that this is a possibility. Teresa is here with us today, and Teresa, thank you so much for sharing your story. Hi. You're welcome. You know, one of the things you said in the tape is you went undiagnosed for a long time, and... I did. I was actually under the care of an ear, nose, and throat doctor, a specialist, who looked at it, you know, must be a cryptic tonsil. I was given the stats. There's a 2% chance it could be a malignancy. I didn't fit the profile of somebody that would be at risk for a throat cancer. So I think it was kind of a watch and wait. We'll take the tonsils out if you want, but it's extremely risky for somebody your age. They didn't seem alarmed, so I wasn't keen to go in and have that kind of a surgery. So I waited. Well, you're not the only one. I would guarantee you almost everyone in this audience and almost everyone at home has no idea that being a non-smoker, non-drinker 
they're at risk. And as a health care provider, somebody who actually is involved with head and neck cancer, I would look at her, she negative history for smoking and drinking and all the typical things. I would not put my suspicions high in her particular case, but it's a, it's a good message. You know what, it's up to us. You have to have your dentist examine you for oral cancer. It's our job, it really is. Do you know that 25% of new cases diagnosed are not in high-risk groups? They're not smokers. They're not people that use alcohol. They're people who really shouldn't have oral cancer. So you really need to make sure your dentist diagnoses it because early diagnosis is the key. I want people home just to see what we talk about when we say the tonsils became afflicted with cancer. So in the back of the throat on either side are the tonsils. Those are the green fluorescent things that are lighting that are now red and that's the HPV virus basically attaching to the tonsil and ultimately it causes cancerous changes in those cells which leads to your devastating diagnosis but one of the things that we talked about is you know it needs to be screened for by your dentist because otherwise it's difficult to pick up. Basically what we do is we incorporate this into their hygiene appointment. So when they come to get their teeth cleaned, we have a machine called the Velscope, which we'll demonstrate in a minute, in all the hygiene rooms. And we do an oral cancer screening every time the patient comes to our office. So tell us about this because your, your symptoms were a sore throat. Not even the sore throat, that went away. It, I, it was really a painless condition. And it looked normal. The, the tonsil was large, but it looked normal. Well, here's the scary thing. You know, there are three times as many cases of oral cancer as there are cervical cancer. And it's really hard to see. When you look in the patient's mouth, you don't always see this. It's not visible to the naked eye. There was a system that was out for a while where you use these dyes and rinses and all that. But they were, they were messy and hard to use. The Velscope's really easy. It's basically a light, and we shine this light in the mouth. In fact, we're going to get Dr. Drew to demonstrate this for us here. And so we can push you... this little light here, and we move the tongue aside. Most of oral cancer is on the base of the tongue. And when I look through this light, what I can see is I see a fluorescent green on the natural tissue. But any dark tissue is precancerous or cancerous or something suspicious that we need to look at. Thank you so much, Teresa. <laughs> As a patient, when you go to your dentist, if they don't do that, you should ask them, would you please examine me for oral cancer? And ask them to use the Velscope. I think this is really the best system on the market today. And the other take home is oral sex needs to be safe sex. It's not without consequences. For more information on HPV and throat cancer, go to thedoctorstv.com.